The seven heavenly virtues and the seven deadly sins describe characteristics all humans can show in their lives, for better or for worse. Clemens was one of, if not the first authors, to depict these traits of virtues and vices as a battle that each person must undertake as they live. Today, we'll discuss the seven virtues and seven vices represented in the VCT. We'll start off with diligence. It's a virtue that can be described as careful and persistent work. Having the drive to achieve something regardless of any distractions and pitfalls that may occur. There are many choices for this virtue. One could say most Valorant professionals practice 8 hours a day, 7 days a week. In-game leaders and coaches probably put in the most work. It is quite common to see many like Chet and Kaplan look dead in interviews, probably from staying up all night, preparing for their matches. Many esports players are known to be shut-ins who never touch grass and possibly find sunlight as poison to their skin. Of course, these are jokes since touching grass and sunlight specifically is important for growth, development, and the health of many people's bodies and mentals. This idea of esports players and coaches being allergic to the sun stems from the fact that many are dedicated to their craft. You will hear stories from the likes of Meteor and Aspas blazing the rank scenes of foreign countries during international events, putting in a lot of hours after their practice sessions to keep themselves sharp. Stories of Kong Kong, Munchkin, EDG, Genji, and Sentinels putting in insane amounts of work to achieve their goals of being the best. You can find a similar dedication in players' bios like Net as well. However, for the virtue of diligence, I would go with EG's 2023 roster. The fruits of hard work pays off most of the time, and this team shows it the most. Before reaching great heights in 2023, this team had the likes of Jagamo, Calm, and Bustio. Bustio was actually on this team since 2021, and during this time, evil geniuses would put up stinkers after stinkers. Even when they brought in the likes of Ethan and Max, this organization graced the world with the first ever 13-0 in VCT history after partnerships became a thing. So how did a team that once seemed talentless went on to lift a champion's trophy later on in the season? Well it was none other thanks to working hard as well as working smart too. People memed the 2023 EG roster for having 10 players, but they would use this investment to practice in ways that other teams couldn't. I mean, we made the team uh, get rushed on like a hundred times. The same site, the same strat, and you know, the players go crazy. How boring is that? But for me, I needed them to be able to react the same way uh, and see the pattern, see the vision. And so um, being able to do that, being really redundant in those kinds of things yeah. has been awesome, you know? Um, and you're not gonna find a scrim partner that's gonna be willing to do no, those things. Yeah, no. So yeah, having that, having the reserve roster has been awesome in that regard. We're winning, so who cares how boring it is during like the hard parts? Right. It's fun winning, but um, definitely there's been some times where it's just like, I'm playing C and then the reserve team will just hit on my side like 15 times in a row and you just do it over and over again. You can hear how annoying these sessions were, but like other champions that we've seen in the past, it was necessary. Like my track coach will always say, pain is weakness leaving the body. The opposite of diligence though is without a doubt the deadly sin of sloth. Its Latin translation is acidia, meaning without care. Many associate the spirit of sloth with lazy and idleness. In Proverbs 16 verse 27, you see that the spirit of sloth opens the door to one's downfall. It states that idle hands are the devil's workshop. It kind of reminds me of a common phrase I would hear athletes say often, which is, if you don't use it, you lose it. Mainly talking about the genetic gifts and abilities that most common people have not achieved or may never have. We can see this spirit of sloth with NRG during their 2024 season. Their former head coach described some of their players as such. I mean, I'll say we didn't work the best, like the hardest, the first roster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like who wasn't working the hardest? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious depending on who got cut, no, <laughs> or what. <laughs> 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 like, is what a question? <laughs> this was a team that had superstar talent, with each one claiming an international title at some point in their career. But as we know now, hard work beats talent, and talent doesn't work hard. And to make matters even worse, Valorant's like any other esports, where everyone is extremely talented, so a lack of hard work is a key ingredient for a poor season. For the next virtue, we'll talk about charity. The act of giving up something without seeking payment or personal gratification in return for. This virtue goes further than just giving money to a homeless person. It can be seen as a type of love. Not the passionate type, nor the type of love defined as an emotional bond free of romantic gestures. The ancient Greeks describe it as agape, a love of God, a selfless love. 
one free of conditional requirements, to do good to your fellow man for just the sake of it. The Valorant community is no stranger to this. We've seen the likes of Tarek raise funds for Bonkers' flight to Ascension, which was an act that many would have not known if Bonkers didn't bring it up himself. Then there's Mr. Fun Haver's commitment to Tier 2 slash Tier 3 tournaments, or Sub Rosa's charity streams. You may even see it through Twist and Shorty campaign where many promise to donate their money for every Shorty kill at Masters events to honor Twiston's memories. All these acts could be seen as charity in its purest form. Even though greed is seen as the opposite of charity, the opposite of love for one another is envy, aka jealousy. A feeling of insecurity or lack of possession so strong where one would want it for themselves over the other. A type of sin that could lead one to anger, resentment, and disgust. This is without a doubt a section of the CSGO community that secretly likes Valorant or envious of the support the game gets from their developers. It's been exactly one year since the game was released. What did we get for the anniversary update? An operation? No. New maps? No. New skins? New case? No. We got nothing. We didn't even get a tweet. So here's a question. How long... How long has the SIG been f***ed? Okay? And you're telling me three days after Valorant comes out, we're f***ing hauling ass now, all of a sudden, huh? We're just, we're just kicking it into high gear and fixing something we hated forever? Okay, all right. Yeah, I see you. No one's falling for it right now, brother, okay? Been over a year and we're still in season one, so- It is quite impressive how rent-free Valorant lives in the heads of some of these people. You will see Reddit articles, Twitter slash X posts, and even videos of CSGO stands non-stop talking about Valorant in such a negative light. Definitely giving Sundere vibes. On the flip side though, for many whose first tactical shooter is Valorant, they will mainly focus on, you guessed it, Valorant. Envy is not a color that looks good on anyone. Kindness is a different story though. It is defined as being friendly, generous, and considerate. Once again, the VCT is filled with tons of examples from players, coaches, owners, and developers showing this virtue. All of these and the ones I've missed would qualify as kindness just like Rienz, who plays the initiator role for his team. Being initiator is all about supporting those around you. He exemplifies this both in and out of the game of Valorant. Hello, I'm Via from Nerditude. My question is for Rienz. Uh, we saw how you went to give a hug to come when this, the game was over and he was feeling sad. I just want to ask, how does it feel like going against people I imagine you become closer? or respect as a player and even though you win to have the kindness to show them support? I mean, I really respect Com because he is a great player in my opinion. He won champions before and he was like top three this year. So like when I saw him crying kind of, I was sad and I just wanted to hug him. Like, like this is just a game, you know, and like beating them doesn't mean that we are enemies, you know. Like we're still friends, so I'm just being like kind, you know. So yeah, it's. It is very similar to the bromance slash friendly rivalry that one can see between this Chinese and APAC teams. It was reported that PaperX continued to scrim with Edward Gaming after being eliminated from champs. If you turn on the streams of some PaperX players, it would be easy to tell who they were rooting for. Truly showing a level of happiness and concern for their fellow rivals who they scrimmed and played against so often. A true definition of a healthy rivalry where iron sharpens iron without seeking blood in the process. However, for gluttony, the only thing that this vice seeks out is food. Having a limitless appetite and overconsumption of it to a point of waste. The perfect thing to represent this vice is without a doubt Bustios, stuff animal pig. Pigs are often depicted as the poster child for gluttony. They will eat anything and everything thrown at them, even their own excrements. Some cultures have gone as far as to refrain from eating such animals, since it is the embodiment of such vile acts. It is no wonder why Riot decided to ban Florida man's piggy at Shanghai. Temperance could be considered the opposite of this though. It is the act of voluntary self-restraint, 
a virtue that mimics a state of balance and peace from worldly acts. So the Gi TV is a good candidate for this virtue. A streamer who you will rarely ever hear be loud in a negative way. And I just want to say if you've been enjoying this video, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. As well as consider being a member if you want to see more. Thanks again for viewing, let's get right back into this topic. Many deem him as their comfort streamer for Valorant analysis and watch parties. Some go as far as to say that his streams are the only ones I felt truly and consistently respected the players, teams, and just the game overall. However, he could easily be a candidate for the sin of wrath for statements like these. Or even for his disdain of Wingman, the people's pet utility. I'm telling you, man. Well. Like, I hate Wingman, bro. Being, we sort of set this nah, team I, up I just hate like, him. Like, that's the thing. We just go for kind of the crowd pleaser but shot of some, some idiot planting. Like, come on, man. I get it. He plants. He does it badly. He does it wrong. Show me the kills. Truly showing us that each of us have two wolves inside of us. And if you let one become sleep deprived while watching a Valorant jail match, then you might get heinous comments like these. Uh, man, okay, shout out to 100 Feet. 100 Feet's doing some great stuff on this map. they yeah, got some great stuff on this map. Christ, bro. Molly yourself. Of course, with how tame that truly was, I'm just joking. Wrath is synonymous with anger, rage, and vengeful hatred towards someone or something. We have seen many players show us what quick bursts of anger could look like. Yeah, They're keeping exactly. their cool. Oh what? man, I didn't see that one. Holy. What the hell? That was a Hulk that? smash. That those, table. Yeah, those tables have feelings. Oh, <laughs> Dude, he could away from me, bro. Oh. Ah. Oh. However, there is only one man in VCT who has a whole mixtape slash montage dedicated to slamming his desk. Alex, Paperex's head coach. It reached levels of insanity that broadcasts and fans couldn't wait but meme it up. We salute the tables who were able to survive his onslaught as well as the ones who perished in the process. And for the virtue of patience, we do not need to travel far. Patience may be seen as the ability to endure difficult circumstances. This one goes to the APAC region as a whole. Out of the three original regions, it is here where fans would see countless teams fail to claim an international title. Before Shanghai, there were a total of 10 official global tier 1 tournaments held by Riot Games and Valorant. Of those 10, the APAC region didn't lift a single one. And it wasn't even the case of the region being bad either. The top teams that come out of here were dangerously good and could go toe to toe with the best. Vision Strikers went on a 134 game run where they didn't lose a single series in the Korean circuit and would see themselves in the top six often as Vision Strikers and later on as DRX. New Turn was a formidable team who competed at the first global masters event at Masters Reykjavik and had future Gen G champions in Solo and Lakia and then Paper X, who were Pacific's embodiment of screw it, we ball, fan favorites for the in-game and out-of-game antics. Of course though, it would take three years and be the 11th tournament where the world would see the likes of Gen.G lift a trophy for the first time in this region's history. An event that took 1,112 days from Masters Reykjavik to Masters Shanghai to do so. But we're not done yet. At the start of kickoffs, Pacific fans will experience a tech pause between Bleed Esports and T1 that felt like purgatory. Actually, there were a number of tech pauses throughout the match that would take 7 hours to finish. Just for map 1, by the way. The level of patience that everyone involved from streamers, fans, and the players themselves on stage had to endure will always be legendary for the wrong reasons. The sin of lust is something different. Most know it as giving into one's libido. It can also be described as the intense desire for money, power, and other callous goals. For this vice, we'll look at Sentinel's mascot and original player card design. It's no secret that sex sells and this definitely screams it. You can't even tell if this thing is wearing a shirt or not. I do want to mention that their social media team likes to troll a lot, so it could have just been a joke. However, if they actually sent this concept to Riot Games, it's no wonder why it was rejected as a player card for their VCT capsules in 2024. It is fire. But it's a little much. It is much. I will give Riot that. I will give Riot that. We could have had it all. But it, if if like if this was our car, dude, like okay, put some clothes on her. Like put like some pants or something. Like some sweats, you know, from here down. And then reduce the booba. Reduce the booba. 
and I w and I would hope that Raya would allow it. But, but, I do understand. I I I, I do understand. We can say though the opposite of lust is chastity, which can be described as refraining from sexual activities considered immoral. We have seen a lot of Valorant players' girlfriends support their boyfriends online. Some have lasted long enough and eventually became committed partners for life. There are examples like Tenzin Kaide or Aspas and Naxi. However, let's highlight the Wilkinsons. Regular listeners and viewers of Plat Chat would hear Sideshow mention his wife often, as well as on stream jokingly at times too. And speaking of love, greed as a vice can be seen as the love of money or the insatiable desire for material items, land, or social value such as status and power. One could say the Sentinels organization knows a thing or two about being greedy. They bought one of, if not the most expensive player in VCT history. World where Tens could have been on 100 Thieves a while back, but his buyout from C9 was the most egregious thing that I've ever came across in esports history. So. In some ways, I wish we would have just paid the the buyout, but it was it, it was an unfathomable number. It was higher than any buyout that I've ever experienced in League of Legends, and that is saying something. <laughs> uh, there's nothing else I can tell you besides that. It was one million dollars. <laughs> Wasn't one million dollars for us. Have Tarek, who's the king of watch parties. Oh my god! Wow, actually, wow, actually, wow, actually, wow. Zelsis, who's probably responsible for the most VCT classics sold versus anyone in terms of individual efforts. And then we're in. Look at this guy, look at this. Guy. You can't hear him. Jordan's not a real person. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we're He's playing. Still dude, listen, still listen. We're playing bundle. ranked to our three teammates every single game, every single round. Every single game, every single round. It's not about winning, it's about selling the bundle. And have asked their fans to directly invest into the team to help cover this appetite. Of course, with the current state of esports, you probably want your org to be a bit greedy because who knows how expensive the future may be. At least for Sentinels though, there have been no reports of their greed being their downfall. Which is something we can't say about Bleed Esports. Last year it was announced that they had acquired Esports Player of the Year, yay. According to many sources, it was not at a cheap price either. However, due to poor performances, he was later on bench during the second half of the season. To make matters worse, Bleed was in drama, and a civil war among players was on full display for everyone to witness, ruining his credibility in the process too. But what could have caused this jealousy among former teammates? Surely this could have been handled in private, right? Well, it's been reported by a handful of people that Bleed Esports had not been paying their players which without a doubt would have added to this horrible situation and increased animosity among the players. This revelation was brought to light only after the rumors swirled that Aspas was about to sign another massive deal with Bleed Esports. An employee of the organization told Riot which would eventually lead to Bleed Esports being investigated and kicked out of the VCT partnership agreement and tier 1 league. Bleed Esports is truly the definition of having eyes bigger than one's own stomach. Signing another massive deal with a talented player while withholding pay from others at one point in time. They are without a doubt the perfect embodiment of greed. Pride is described as confidence and satisfaction in oneself, basically having a large ego. Something that many players in the VCT have whether they like to show it or not. Confidence slash pride can also be seen as the opposite of shame or humility. But at the same time, one could say it's a virtue because for certain roles, you probably don't want someone to be too timid. However, too much confidence is a bad thing as well. Pride always goeth before the fall, almost certainly. The two individuals who embody this the most is Max and Keldon. I love how he targets people. Like oh, yeah. before NRG, he was like, yeah, I can't wait to play them. I've never played them. Before Carl 9, which is tomorrow, he's like, can't wait to play Leaf. Let's see who's the better jet. Like he just targets people. He That's has unreal confidence and he's so new to the scene. It's insane. I've never seen anything like it. Well, it's ridiculous. You know he was able to back up his ego and trash talking in 2023, but in 2024, it was a bit tougher to maintain this level of pride. My team now is even better on paper, and the expectations are probably even higher than last year. I haven't even seen their roster, don't know who's on the team since <laughs> last year, don't really care either. 
He said, who? <laughs> who am I playing? <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Maybe in 2025, he can do it. For Busio though, there's no secret as to how he feels about a certain Chinese region. However, after Master Shanghai, his team failed to qualify. And some commentators took this moment to bask in his downfall. That's a China saying bye bye Busio. That was crazy. I don't know why they did that. Shortly after, EDG would win champs 2024 after seeing multiple America's teams take L's to Chinese teams. Pride usually comes before the fall indeed. And like we mentioned earlier, the opposite of pride is humility. The quality of being humble, characterized by modest behavior, selfishness, and giving of respect. This post-game interview shows a high level of such humility. Um, my question is to Kang Kang. Before the match, you were asked who is a better duelist, you or Aspas, and you humbly and tastefully replied that it's Aspas, uh, but you're not afraid of him. So after winning uh, over Leviathan, do you consider yourself a better duelist? Uh, I still think Aspas is better than me. Yeah, because I never have the world championship. Right now, I still got nothing, so I still can't compare with him because he, in my heart, he's still the world number one duelist. Yeah. With stats like these, I don't think anyone would be questioning Kang Kong if he said he diff ass pass or was better than him, but instead he took the high road. However, there is one player that may be even more humble and at one point even a better player than Kong Kong without having to show any crazy pop offs, which is Leo. Fanatic's initiator, and at one point considered the best one in the world, and possibly just the best player in general. He has helped carry Fnatic so many times without being too vocal in the process about it. In fact, you can say that most of Fnatic is kinda like this. It might explain why so many people don't put their players in the GOAT debate, even after their impressive runs at title contentions. Thanks again for viewing, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. As well as consider being a member if you want to see more. Stay safe, be a KDA warrior, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.